For the activity-based costing chapter, let's take a look at problem 3-14A. Um, that's one that I asked you to take a look at. Now, what's going on here? For many years, the company has manufactured a single product called a mono relay. About three years ago, the company automated part of our plant, and at the same time, we introduced a second product called the buy relay. It's becoming more popular. Now, it's a more complex product requiring an hour of direct labor time as opposed to the regular mono relay that only requires 0.75 or three quarters of an hour of direct labor time to make and only a small amount of machinery to use. Now the way we currently allocate manufacturing overhead is on the basis of direct labor hours. Very popular like we talked about in class. So despite the growing popularity of the buy relay, profits have been going down. And we're trying to figure out what's going on. If we take a look at our costing so far, we've got the mono relay here, we've got the buy relay here, and we know there are three things that go into a cost of a product. Direct materials, direct labor, and then we're going to allocate or assign manufacturing overhead based upon that predetermined overhead rate. Well, the first thing we got to come up with is what is our predetermined overhead rate? It asks us, and number one, compute the predetermined manufacturing overhead rate, assuming the company uses our direct labor hours, like we've been doing. And then use this rate to figure out the product cost of each product. So we know, again, there are three things that go into the cost of a product. Direct materials, direct labor, and then the manufacturing overhead that we assign to the product. So if we go ahead and plot it out, what do we have? Well, we've got our mono relay, we've got our buy relay, and we know we're into the mono relay for $35 in direct materials, $9 in direct labor, and then we have to figure out how much manufacturing overhead is going to go for each mono relay. The same thing with the buy relay, $48 in direct materials, 12 bucks in direct labor, and then we have to figure out how much manufacturing overhead is going to go. And we're looking at the traditional way we've been doing it, using a single predetermined overhead rate based upon direct labor hours. Now what does the problem tell us? It tells us that we estimate the company will incur a million dollars in manufacturing overhead during the year. 40,000 units of the mono relay and 10,000 units of the buy relay are going to be produced and sold. And they want us to come up with the predetermined overhead rate based upon direct labor hours, the single plant-wide predetermined overhead rate using the old way. All right, so how do we get the predetermined overhead rate? Well, the predetermined overhead rate is going to be our total estimated cost divided by our total estimated activity. Total estimated cost that we're going to incur in that factory for overhead for the entire year divided by the total activity. Well, in this case, the total estimated cost is going to be $1 million. So that's our million that we're anticipating is the total cost of our entire overhead for the factory for that year. Total estimated activity, we're going to use direct labor hours. What we need to figure out is how much hour usage are we going to have? How many direct labor hours are we going to have in total? Well, what does the problem tell us? It tells us that we're going to make 40,000 units of the model relay and 10,000 units of the buy relay. So 40,000 of these guys and 10,000 of these guys. Now, each individual unit uses a certain number of hours. And what do we know? The buy relay is going to use one hour of direct labor time. The mono relay uses 0.75 hours, or three quarters of an hour, of direct labor time. So each mono relay is going to use 0.75 hours, and each buy relay is going to use one hour of direct labor time. So how many total hours are we going to spend on the mono relay? We're going to have 40,000 units times 0.75 hours. We're going to have 30,000 hours that we're going to use of labor working on the mono relay. And then for the buy relay, we're going to use 10,000 times one hour apiece, or 10,000 hours for the buy relay. The total amount of hours we're going to use in this factory is 30,000 plus the 10,000. We're going to use 40,000 labor hours in this factory for the mono and the buy relay combined. So, 
if we use 40,000 labor hours, we're going to take a million dollars, spread that out over 40,000 hours, our predetermined overhead rate is going to be million divided by 40,000. It's going to be $25 per direct labor hour. So for every labor hour that we're working, we're going to slap on $25 in manufacturing overhead. This is the traditional way we did using the predetermined overhead rate. So getting a regular standard plant-wide overhead rate, we get $25 per direct labor hour. Now, what does that mean? The mono relay, how many labor hours are we using? We're using 0.75 labor hours, or three quarters of an hour, to make one mono relay. So if we're spreading overhead out at $25 an hour, times 0.7 hours, we're going to get 25 times 0 0.75, $18.75 in manufacturing overhead for every mono relay that we do. Now for the buy relays, we're going to take $25 an hour times the one hour that it takes, we're going to have $25. In manufacturing overhead, we're going to put on each buy relay. So our unit product cost, using the old way, using a single predetermined overhead rate, a plant-wide predetermined overhead rate, our cost for the mono relay is going to be $62.75. Our cost for the buy relay is going to be $85. And there's part one. Compute the predetermined overhead rate, that's the $25 per hour. And then using that, compute the product cost of each product. For the mono, it's going to be $62.50. For the buy, it's going to be $85. Now, that's the first part. If we flip the page, we see in number two, management is considering using activity-based costing to apply manufacturing overhead. So a different way of spreading out this thing right here, manufacturing overhead, these two right there. So the activity-based costing system would have the following four activity cost pools. Let's take a look at them. So if we take a look, we take our million dollars in estimated overhead cost, and we're going to break it down into the four different activities that we think are a good measure for what's going on with our manufacturing, manufacturing overhead. So we start with the maintaining the parts inventory. We spend 180000 of that million maintaining the inventory. And a good measure for that is going to be the part types, the number of part types that we have for each either the mono or the buy relay. Then we spend 90 grand in processing purchase orders. Well, a good measure for that are the number of purchase orders that we have. We spend $230,000 in quality control, and a good measure for that would be the number of test runs that we do, checking that quality. And then finally, a half million is spent on machine hours, not labor hours, but machine hours, and so, or machine related costs, and a good measure would be machine hours. So we take that million and we spread it out to different activities. If we take a look at it, all this is doing right here is the same thing the book gave us. Take that million and spread it out to the four different activities. Now, for each activity, we're going to have to come up with a predetermined overhead rate, a different rate for each individual activity. And we do that based upon the total activity that we anticipate for each one. For example, the first one, we've got $180,000 in cost that we anticipate for machine maintaining the parts inventory. And we're going to measure that according to the different part types that each uses. Now, the total number of part types that we have are 225 types of parts. We're going to have, per different type of part or per different part, that gives us an activity rate for each individual type of part, 180 divided by 225, of $800 per part. For each individual part that we have, we're going to spend $800. For processing purchase orders, we've got $90,000. How many purchase orders do we do? We do a total of 1,000 purchase orders. So that 1,000 purchase orders, we divide 90,000 by that 1,000. For every purchase order we do, that's $90 in manufacturing overhead we anticipate. For quality control, we're going to do a certain number of test runs. We spend 230000 on it. How many total test runs do we do? Well, we do 5,750 test runs. 
So if we do 5,750 test runs, each test run we're going to allocate or spread out $40 to each individual test run. And then finally for machine related costs we have half a million dollars. We're going to measure that on machine hours. How many total machine hours are we going to be working on both the mono and the buy relay? We're going to be working a total of 10,000 machine hours. So 10,000 machine hours spread out, $500,000 spread out over that is going to be for every machine hour we're going to have $50 in manufacturing overhead that we allocate to it. So what we did was we came up with a predetermined overhead rate for each individual type of activity utilizing the total cost we're going to spread out and the total activity we anticipate we're going to have. So with these activity rates, we can then assign activity cost to the mono and the buy relay. So we can allocate it and spread it out appropriately. So if we take a look at our expected activity, we've got the mono relay and the buy relay each have a total expected activity for each of these four different types of activity measures. Starting off with the mono relay, we see we use 75 of the total 225 different part types. 800 of the total 1,000 different purchase orders. We use 2,500 test runs out of the 5,700 and change and we use 4,000 of the 10,000 machine hours. So we can use that, that information, combined with the activity rates we just got in order to come up with the total cost that should be assigned to the mono relay of that million. So all we're doing is taking this information and translating it over to a spreadsheet. And for each different type of part, we use 75 different parts, we have $800 in activity rate. All we're doing is taking this activity rate and then bringing it down here to figure out for the mono relay how much total cost should go there. So if we take 75 times the 800, we end up with $60,000 that's supposed to go or should go to the mono relay. So 60,000 of the 180,000 total should go to the mono relay as opposed to the buy relay. All right, if we take 800 different purchase orders times $90 per order, we see $72,000 of the purchase order processing should go to the mono relay of the 90,000. We do 2,500 test runs times $40 per test run. We should have $100,000 of that $230,000 go to the mono relay as opposed to the buy relay. And then finally we have 4,000 machine hours times 50 bucks per hour. 200,000 of that 500,000 should go to the mono relay. So the total amount that should go to the mono relay as opposed to the buy relay it's going to be $432,000 should be going to the mono relay, not the buy relay. Now the question is, how many of those things do we make? Of that million dollars in overhead cost, $432,000 should go to the mono relay, not the buy relay. We make a lot more of the mono than we do the buy. If we look back, we see we make 40,000 units of the mono relay and only 10,000 units of the buy relay. So if we take $432,000 spread out over 40,000 units, each unit should get a total of $10.80 in overhead applied to it. For the mono relay, the manufacturing overhead cost per unit should be $10.80. plug that into our cost, we should see $35 in direct materials, $9 in direct labor, $10.80 in manufacturing overhead should be applied to the mono relay for a total of $54.80. Now what we just did with the mono relay, we can do the exact same thing with the buy relay. So we can set it up exactly the same as we did for the mono relay only for the buy relay now. Using the same activity rates, 
The only thing that's going to change is the level of activity that we use. And here we just simply look back at the problem. The number of part types, purchase orders, test runs, and machine hours for the buy relay. And what do we see? We see for the buy relay, 150 part types, 200 purchase orders, 3,250 test runs, and 6,000 machine hours for the buy relay. And when we plug that information in, what we see is the rest of that million, or 568,000, should go to the buy relay. Now we only make 10,000 units of the buy relay. So the cost per unit should be $56.80 in overhead for each individual unit. And if we plug that 5680 into our total cost, what we see is that the buy relay actually costs us $116.80. So in the end we see there's a significant difference. If we use regular costing, a single predetermined overhead rate, we end up with a much different pro total product cost because of the way we allocate the manufacturing overhead as opposed to activity-based costing. If we compare our product cost under the traditional method, we ended up with 62.75 for the mono and 85 for the buy relay versus activity-based costing, where it's only 54.80 for the mono, but 116.80 for the buy relay, we see there's a significant difference. And that is your basic activity-based costing problem. You spread out the manufacturing overhead based upon different activities, coming up with an activity rate for each.